Just tell that neighbor he's worthy. Isaiah said he saw the seraphim. With six wings, two they did fly. They cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Tell that neighbor, I want to be filled with his glory. In the 15th chapter of John, the ninth verse, Jesus speaks these words. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Listen to what Jesus says. It's very important. Don't miss it. These things I have spoken to you for this purpose. What's the purpose, Lord? That my joy might remain where? In you. And that your joy might be full. Tell that neighbor, don't lose your joy. Don't lose your joy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Don't lose your joy. Don't lose your joy. The Bible calls the devil the chief accuser of the brethren. In this same gospel of John Chapter 10 and verse 10. The thief is coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Don't get it twisted. Don't ever forget it. The devil is not your friend. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. Don't ever think that you can win with the devil. You will lose in the end. I believe it was Elder Johnny Morris and his wife Pam that came some years ago and must have been the early 80s because I think we were in the cathedral. They had an evangelistic ministry and they had made a lot of religious sayings from commercial jingles and they became known for that. Like McDonald's, you deserve a, you deserve a break today, so get up and get away. And they changed some of those words to make them religious and spiritual. And I believe that they might have been the first ones that I ever heard sing the song, Don't Let the Devil Drive. And they used to sing that song, and I believe they were the ones that introduced it that I can remember. Don't let the devil drive. Ride. Thank you. Don't let the devil ride. Don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, to them, he gonna wanna drive. Don't let him ride. And the church used to get with that song. It was cute. But the words were so powerful. If you let him ride, sooner or later, he's not going where you're taking him. You're going where he is taking you. Because he's not going to be satisfied riding, he's going to want to drive. Because the driver is the lead. 
So we should never get it twisted or confused about who the devil is and what his plan is. The Bible says he goes to and fro and up and down in the earth seeking whom he may devour. That is his goal. That is his plan. That is his desire for our lives. So in knowing that, then there must be something and some things that we must do to continue to keep the devil at bay or to keep him in his place. And I've learned, my brothers and sisters, that he is not only the chief accuser of the brethren, but he is the most masterful distractor. He wants to get you misfocused or distracted or to change your direction from the pathway of God or righteousness to the road of destruction. He wants to distract us from light to darkness and one of the chief weapons of the enemy is the spirit of gloom it comes in depression it comes in oppression it comes in feeling sorry for yourself it comes in uh, 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 allowing people to come into your life and suck all the energy out of you even when they leave, it looks like they left and took everything peaceful and, 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 and everything productive and, and everything progressive about you and for you when they left. Uh, just, just suck the living life, energy, vitality, dreams, aspirations, visions, and hopes that you have had in your life. And I guess that's why Jesus speaks here about joy. He talks about our joy remaining. Uh, one of his prayers for us, his whole purpose in teaching and sharing with us, is that our joy might remain. If your joy has the potential to remain, that means it must remain be here you must have it nothing can remain unless it's already there so if he's praying or teaching us or sharing with us that our joy might remain then that means that we have some joy and I don't know how much joy you have I don't know whether I don't know whether you're on 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 a quarter tank or a half tank or, or, or maybe you've got this tank full and you've got a reserve tank. I don't know. But I know one thing. He wants our joy to remain and he wants our joy to be full. So if you got a half a tank, he's got some more joy for you. If your tank is not full, he's got some more joy that's available for you. And the joy that he gives us. He's not playing games with us. He's not an Indian giver. He doesn't give us anything beneficial that he wants to take from us. And many times, brothers and sisters, the only reason that you lose some of the blessings that God gave you or favored you with is because you put the blessing before the blesser. And just like if I were to give my kids a, 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 a electronic game, and now that they have that electronic game, they're playing it and they're so into the game that they love the game so much until I call them, they don't hear me. Or I call them and they say, what? Or I tell them to come here, they say, give me a minute. I'm, let me find some old school people up in here. Because as soon as you made that statement, mama or daddy would say, don't let me have to come get you. Y'all got it. All right. Now, if he puts that game before me, then I'm getting ready to take that game from him. 
But I didn't buy the game to take it back. I bought the game for him to be happy and for him to enjoy. I don't believe that God is an Indian giver. I don't believe that Christ is an Indian giver. Well, Bishop, he told Abraham to sacrifice his son, his only son, Isaac. Yes, but at the end of the day, we all know the end of the story. He was only testing him. He did not give him a son to kill the son. The son is the son of promise. And thank God that Abraham, he, he, the Bible says, he used this for a great phrase in Hebrews. He staggered not at the promises of God. In other words, Abraham was going to kill that boy as sure as his name is the father of faith because he believed that some kind of way if I kill this boy, God going to resurrect him back up. In other words, he trusted God even when he didn't understand God. So let's get back to joy. I believe that joy is important. As a matter of fact, it's listed as one of the fruits of the Spirit. Joy is a fruit that God wants to give us and that he wants to. Amen. Come from us or fruit that we would bear. When people meet the saints of God, they ought not be meeting, amen, people that are frowning and people that are mad and people look like they've been sucking on lemons. And, 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 and as I heard somebody say, if you're happy, notify your face because evidently your face don't know you happy. And, and, and sometimes we just have habits and stuff. My mother used to tell me, get those wrinkles out your forehead. Amen. Why are you frowning? I said, Mom, I'm not frowning. She said, well, you look like you're frowning. So I had to start practicing and conditioning myself. And when I would talk to my wife and, and I had some wrinkles, she would tell me, quick, Negro, get them wrinkles out your forehead. Because you will get nothing from me thinking you can push your weight around. Yeah, you can get something from me by smiling. You can get something from me by rubbing my back and, and by massaging my shoulders and, and giving me some sugar. How y'all? Am I talking to somebody up in here? Yeah, you can't holler and get nothing from me. So sometimes we have to look in the mirror and just make sure that we're looking like we're blessed. That we're looking like the favor of God is upon us. Come on, y'all. Well, Bishop, I'm laid off right now. But listen, start smiling. Nobody want to hire somebody mad. You don't know who you're talking to in the elevator. You don't know who you're at the stoplight with. You don't know who you're passing in the cleaners, in the grocery store. Hey, man, put a smile on your face. Nobody want nobody mean working for them. Look pleasant. Believe that God is going to bring a change in your life. Because if you really believe that, the frown will go away and the smile will come. So he wants us to have joy. Not only does he want us to have joy, but he wants us to be filled with a, or that our joy might be full. He wants his joy to remain so that our joy can be full. One of the fruits of the spirit is joy and peace and love and happiness and this goes on and on and on. And there's so many benefits that come with the Lord. And, and with the Lord, you get peace. And with the Lord, you get strength. And with the Lord, you get anointing. And with the Lord, you get favor. And with the Lord comes prosperity. And with the Lord comes healing. And with the Lord comes provision. And with the Lord comes joy. And he wants our joy to be full. But can we be honest in this human frame and in our humanity? There are many things that come to attack our joy. And many things have the potential and the ability. And most times the wherewithal to kind of snatch our joy or, or to wear on our joy or to hinder our joy or to suppress our joy. And you have to make up in your mind, along with me making up in my mind, that I am going to be happy. And, and I'm just determining that that's who I'm going to be. I don't know what's going to happen today. You know, and, and listen, there a whole lot of things can disrupt your peace. A whole lot of things can disrupt your joy. But, but, but I am determining that I am going to be happy today. I woke up this morning and today is going to be a good day. 
I don't know what the phone call is going to bring. I don't know what the text message is going to read. I don't know what the email is going to convey. But one thing I do have the ability to take control of is my joy and, and my peace. That, uh, I have the ability to own that and I have the ability, amen, to sustain that. Because I get to respond to whatever happens to me. And I get to respond negatively, or I get to res respond positively, or I get to ignore it altogether. So, there we are. I got joy. And I went to bed last night feeling good. And woke up, didn't have any nightmares. And I feel that today is going to be a great day. But then here comes some bad news. Bad news, how many of y'all know it has a potential to disrupt your joy? A sour or disappointing relationship has the potential to disrupt your joy. And people on strike, their finances, their home, all that they own and all they have to take care of each and every month is in jeopardy. That has a, 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 sometimes a, a potential to disrupt your joy. You lost a loved one and you didn't see it coming. You got blinds that disrupts your joy. You just went and had your physical or you see some blood here or there. And it disrupts your joy. That doesn't mean that it can take your joy. But it has the potential to disrupt your joy or to suppress your joy. And, and brothers and sisters, who is the devil? He's a chief accuser. Who is the devil? He is a masterful distractor. And if you're not careful, the devil will have you out here worrying about something that God has already taken care of. So you have to be oh so very careful to put some things in the hand of the Lord and keep moving and keep pressing and keep trucking along. And some of you have to learn to get negative folk out of your space. I don't have no space. I don't have no place. I don't have no time for bad luck schlep rots. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know what's going to happen today. It just seems like something bad going to happen. Get away from me now, quick, fast. And then, you got to get out my car. You're going to do me like I'm calling you an Uber, a taxi, or whatever. You just can't ride with me. Because I'm looking for God to bless me today. I'm, I'm looking for windows to be open today. I'm looking for God's favor. I'm looking for God to do some great things in my life. I wish I was helping three people up in here. I get to control that. I get to take charge of that. And I, through my mind, get to believe whatever I choose to believe. Sometimes in our humanity... We let circumstances get the best of us. Many times in these human frames, we allow things to suck our joy, to disturb our joy, to suppress our joy. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it could be relationship, it could be health challenges, it could be money problems, it could be whatever. And there we go, we start thinking that things ain't going to work out. We start thinking that we're not going to make it and, when, and we walk that tightrope. Amen. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm getting ready to fall out. I don't know. I feel like something bad going to happen today. What's well, start feeling like something good is going to happen. I mean, if you're going to have a feeling, make it a good feeling. Sometimes you let people rub you the wrong way and, 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 and sometimes when people are rubbing you the wrong way, hey amen, you want to respond and y'all be, listen, y'all might as well be honest up in here. Let's, can we be honest? Yes, sir. Let's be honest. Sometimes you don't feel like turning the other cheek. All right, all right. All right. Y'all want me to go there? Hey amen. Sometimes you feel like slapping the crap out of somebody. I thought you were saved. I am, but not right now. Now, you got one more time, and it's going to be on, and I'm going to set this place off, I swear for God. Sometimes you've gotten there. Sometimes you said some things, oh, my 
God, did I say that? Oh my God, did I act out like that? Oh my God, did I do that? Oh my God, did, did, I, I, brothers and sisters, we're human. We're human. And listen, I'm blessed and highly favored, but I'm still human. And, and, and listen, I don't like being lied on. I don't like being talked about. I don't like people running me down. Come on, somebody. I try my best to always think positive. I try my best to always hope and believe that things are going to get better. And y'all know, I try not to sweat stuff. Even when we got enough money to pay stuff, I don't sweat it, amen, because this is the Lord's house and, and this is God's church and, and this is the house of the Lord and I believe that it's going to work out some kind of way. It worked out for the saints in the 20s. It worked out for the saints in the 30s. It worked out for the saints in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It worked out for the saints in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s. It worked out for us in the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010 and it's going to work out in the 2020 so I'm not sweating it y'all know I came up with the saying I love you to life we love you to life that's mine I got to copyright that thing somebody get that just copyright that stuff for me for folk take it and have t-shirts and everything negro that's my saying People give me a little credit on social media. As Bishop Ellis always say, I love you to life. And I love people to life. I don't want to think bad about nobody. I want to pray for everybody with a clear conscience. I don't need to know all the bad stuff. When husbands and wife are counseling me, I don't need to know everything because I don't need graphic things in my head. I get what you're talking about. I know what unfaithful is. I don't need to know who, when, where. I ain't see no pictures or nothing. Don't drag me down in that. When I got to pray for folk, I want to pray for folk and believe the best in them. I don't care what they've done. I don't care where they've come from to believe that if any man be in Christ, he is a. And sometimes y'all, y'all applaud me, man. Bishop, man, he's strong, man. Bishop, man, he lets stuff roll off his back like water off a duck's back. I mean, don't nothing bother him. Listen, stuff bothers me all the time. I just don't let it take my joy. It, I don't like being lied on. I don't like folk talking about me. But listen, it's who I am. It's the position I have. It's who people are going to be. What I got to focus on is God still blessing me. Is God still with me? Then if God is still with me, then you deal with it and you move on. But you don't give your joy to people. Yeah, hey, I'm human like everybody else. Uh, something happened a couple of, a couple of Saturdays ago, and 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 and, and it caught me at a, at a moment. And I had flown to Richmond, Virginia, to preach uh, uh, installation. A young man was being made a bishop, and he wanted me to come to preach the service. And I preached the service. Got up early that Saturday morning, six a.m., and flew to Richmond, Virginia, and preached that service at one o'clock. Got back on a plane at six o'clock and I had to fly through Atlanta. I hate flying through Atlanta. Got to wait an hour in Atlanta and then fly from Atlanta to Detroit. So you got to go from Virginia down to Atlanta, back up to Detroit. So I'm already tired and it's been a long day and I got to get up at six o'clock in the morning and be here for Sunday service. So I get back home and I'm tired and I get in my car and Metro, they got construction out there at the airport. From the, from the entrance of the airport uh, all the way to uh, Middle Belt, almost uh, E-Course Road. So it's just two lanes. And, and I'm tired and whipped and worn out. And there I am in the midst of the traffic. It ain't like you can do nothing. It's just two lanes. And it's creeping and crawling. And this fellow behind me with a pickup. And, 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 and he didn't look like me. And he's riding my bumper. As if, let's go. I'm like, dude, you can't go nowhere. So he's on my bumper. True story, he's on my bumper. And I'm looking, I'm like, dude, this ain't the night. And I'm just in this traffic. You can't do anything. And he's on my bumper. Now, if I'm in my 20s, I know how to get somebody off your bumper. You just jam on the brakes. And they almost throw themselves through the window. Then you pull off and say, now. Nah. But I ain't trying to do nothing. I don't have my gun. 
with me. I'm just trying to get home on a Saturday night. And this fellow will not stop. He won't let it go. And, I, and I'm like, this is the wrong day. And when we got close to E-Course where it opened up and the construction barrels were gone, I said, let me get over here and let this guy move on wherever he got to go. And I mean, he leaned all the way over in his, in his passenger section and threw the finger up at me. And looked like he was saying something. And I'm looking, I'm like, and before I knew it, I hit the gas. I'm just being honest. I caught up with him, I rolled my window down, and I was letting it go. I was calling him everything. I mean, I was a sailor. I was letting you. Who you think you are? And just that quick, I came myself and I was daydreaming. Got gotcha. y'all. But I had to repent because all that was in my mind. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm saying sometimes it gets the best of you on your best day when you want to believe God, when you want to trust God, when you want to praise God. And here comes the enemy and he's throwing everything at you and the kitchen sink and he catches you when you're tired, when you're weak, when you're worn, when you ain't got this and you ain't got that. And it seems like everything is going wrong and it seems like everything is coming around you. And when you want to give up he comes at you but you still got to find a way to hold on to your joy maybe you got to go to the word and you got to see Paul and Silas who are locked up in a, a Philippi jail and they've been beaten for no reason at all only for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ but the Bible says at midnight when it was darkest at midnight when it was most severe at midnight when it seemed like they were forgotten and left all alone they started singing and they started praying and they started praising God and God sent an earthquake brothers and sisters if you can keep your joy God can turn some things around he dwells the Bible says uh, in the midst of the praises of his people uh, if you can keep praising God with joy you will find that he'll turn some things and he'll shift some things around for you am I talking to somebody that's been down at your lowest point but you had to sing a song and I ain't talking about earth wind and fire I'm talking about sing a gospel song uh, sing a religious song sing a song you don't know like I know what he's done for me look at where the Lord has brought me from God is a good God yes he is I've been on the battlefield and I ain't running from it is there anybody ever had to sing a song to hold on to your joy you had to pray to hold on to your joy you had to read a scripture to hold on to your joy you had to lift your hands to hold on to your joy is there anybody glad that you didn't cut somebody out you glad that you didn't hit somebody you glad you didn't slap the crap out of somebody but you held on to your joy and God came in and worked that thing out for you tell that neighbor I'm glad I didn't let go sometimes you gotta look and you gotta see that you ain't in this thing by yourself you're not going through anything that somebody has not already been through. Uh, the wise man in Ecclesiastes say uh, that everything that has been will be again uh, and everything that is uh, has already been. Uh, so you ain't the only one that done suffered loss. You ain't the only one uh, that lost a job. You ain't the only one that lost a loved one. You ain't the only one that been diagnosed with two second stage, third stage, fourth stage. Uh, you ain't the only one going through what you're going 
on. You ain't the only one been lied on. You got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that God has a joy that can get you through your most dire situation. He has a joy that can keep you in the midst of your jeopardy. He has a joy that can keep a smile on your face when it seems like an elephant is on your back. Is that not what the word says? He says, look to Jesus who is our example. He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and he despised the shame. But now God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. If you want a good name, you got to go through something. If you want a high name and exalted name, you got to withstand something. You got to let somebody lie on you. You can't be in a battle and not come out bloody with some scars. But you can hold on to your joy. Tell that neighbor, don't lose your joy. Don't, 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 don't lose it. Don't, don't you dare lose your joy. Don't you let nobody suck your joy from you. Don't you let nobody take no joy from you. That man might have left you, left you and told you you were never going to be nothing. You watch and see what I'm going to be. You ain't even seen my height. You ain't even seen how far I'm going. God has got some things in store for me that I don't even know exist. Uh, but I'm going to praise him until I get it. Uh, I'm going to bless him until I receive it. Uh, I'm going to thank him until he manifested in my life. Tell the neighbor, hold on to your joy. Tell that other neighbor, don't lose your joy. Don't, don't, don't lose your joy. Uh, you see, your joy is important. Uh, why is my joy important? Uh, because the Bible says uh, that they told them in uh, the book of uh, Habakkuk. Uh, when you look in uh, the book of uh, Habakkuk, uh, you see a man when Ezra the priest, uh, a man when they asked him to pull uh, the scrolls uh, and to read the word. Uh, they had been without the word for a long time. Uh, but when Ezra went uh, and got the word, of God uh, and he brought it back out to the people uh, the Bible says uh, watch this uh, as soon as he opened the word of God uh, the Bible says all the people uh, they stood up uh, because they know the word of God uh, it means that God is able uh, the word of God is living uh, the Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword uh, the Bible says that it is alive it's quick uh, and it's powerful uh, and when the word goes goes out uh, it's going to do something uh, that's why the man that was a centurion uh, he told Jesus my servant is sick unto death uh, God said what do you want me to do about it uh, he said I believe that you can heal my servant uh, Jesus said well I'll come to your house uh, he said wait a minute you ain't got to come to my house uh, just send your word uh, if you send your word uh, it's going to heal my servant uh, when Ezra opened the book of the law uh, when he opened the word uh, the people jump to their feet. Uh, that's why we stand when we read the word of God. Uh, it is not historic. Uh, it means something because when the word is coming forth, uh, it's going to change something in your situation. Uh, if it don't change your situation, it's going to change you while you're in your situation. Uh, that's why we say stand when the word uh, is being read. Uh, when he read the book of the law, uh, the Bible said those people stood from the morning uh, all the way to the midday and the Bible said when they heard the word they felt their joy coming back they felt their anointing coming back they felt their praise coming back and then they concluded in that text they said for the joy of the Lord it is your strength the reason that you're weak is because you done lost your joy but I tell you you get in here with a smile on your face you get in here with your heart open and receptive to hear the word of God. Uh, you get in here with the positive thinking uh, that this is my day. Uh, your day for what? My day for healing. Uh, my day for deliverance. Uh, my day for breakthrough. Uh, this is the day that God uh, is going to turn it around. Uh, and watch and see if you can think that. Uh, if you can speak that. Uh, watch your joy start coming. Uh, you'll find yourself jumping on amazing grace. Uh, you'll find yourself so run it up. Oh, how precious Lord, take my hand. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, that know the joy of the Lord uh, 
it brings you a refreshing it brings you a renewing it brings you the strength of God and I'm here to tell the devil you can't have my joy you can have my job I can be out striking but I'm striking in the joy of the Lord you can take my loved one but I still got the joy of the Lord you can ruin my relationship but I still got the joy of the Lord I dare you to shake a neighbor's hand and tell a neighbor you might steal my money you might steal my car and my ring but you can't steal my joy this joy I have the world didn't give it to me this joy that I have the world can't take it away I wish I had a hundred people that would just lean your head back and shout joy up in this place I thank God for joy I got it unspeakable I got it filled with glory I got joy in the morning I got joy when I'm weak I got joy when I'm hurting I got joy when I'm crying I got joy when I'm down I got joy when I'm broke I got joy when I'm sick I got joy when I'm lame is there anybody in here that will tell the devil you can't have my joy my joy is my strength my strength is my victory and I'm not going down I'm going up I'm not going to lose I'm going to win because if I can hold on to my joy the Lord will make a way somehow don't know how but somehow the Lord will bring me out the Lord will make a way the Lord will turn it around shout joy shout joy shout joy somebody shout it if you ain't got no joy the Bible said leap for joy if you can't leap clap for it if you can't clap shake for it if you can't shake holler for it but whatever you do hold on hang on to your joy shout it yeah yeah Shake somebody's hand. Tell them the joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Tell them the joy of the Lord. It brings the anointing. Tell them the joy of the Lord. It brings a renewing. The joy of the Lord. It brings a refreshing. Come on and shout joy. Shout joy. Shout joy. Shout joy. Somebody just give God a clap. The people of God stood from sun up to sundown when the word was being read because they know the word it brings a change the Bible says the word never goes out without changing something it says the word will not return void until it has done what it went to do if the word goes out somebody getting ready to get healed if the word goes out somebody's getting ready to get delivered if the word goes out somebody's getting ready to get a renewing watch what David says when he messes up with Bathsheba read Psalm 51 when you get home when he tells the Lord he repents he pours out his heart creating me a clean heart renewing me a right spirit purge me with hyssop wash me and I shall be whiter than snow 
and he says restore the joy of thy salvation I don't want to just be back. I want to be back with joy. I don't want to be just back in the church. I want to be back in the church dancing and leaping and praising and shouting and giving God the glory. Restore the joy of thy salvation. David said, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleaning me, cleansing me. Thank you for renewing a right spirit in me. But Lord, I need you to restore the joy. Somebody shout joy. I hope y'all getting this. I need you, Lord, to restore the joy of thy self. Let people look at me funny. Let other folks say, I don't trust him. I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her. Let them say whatever they want to say. But I just need you to restore the joy of thy salvation. I say this and I'm done. You can't control nobody else can't make nobody love you can't make nobody pay you back your money well I'll take them to court go to court and they'll be working and getting paid under the table for the rest of their life you can't control them things but what you can control is the joy of the Lord They used to sing that song in the old church. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. <laughs> it didn't mean nothing when you're in your teens. <laughs> but now that you're old enough to have gone through some stuff. That man, no wonder he used to sing that song all the time. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world didn't take it. All right, y'all stop. Y'all stop. Y'all stop. Y'all get ready to start something up in here. And they didn't just stop with the joy. They said, "This peace that I had, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this peace that I had, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this peace." Now you can throw anything in there. You can throw rays, you can throw strength, you can throw power, you can throw anointing, you can sing that song half a day. The world didn't give it, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it. Don't you lose your joy. Tell that neighbor, whatever you do, don't lose your joy. Hang on to your joy. Jesus said, these words have I spoken to you. That your joy might remain. And that my joy might be full in you. Everybody standing. Maybe the devil has you on the ropes. Maybe you've taken a blow in. Maybe sometimes you feel like you're not going to make it. Hold on to your joy.
That's right, come on. Let him restore your joy. Let him renew your joy. Get in a hurry this morning. Come on, this is the last one. 